डॉक्टर शंकर प्रसाद फाउंडर ऑफ संपूर्ण स्वराज फाउंडेशन मेड अ प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन नेविगेटेड लर्निंग टेक्नोलॉजी दैट इज एन एल टी टू द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ पंचायत राज एम ओ पी आर रिसेंटली ड्यूरिंग एन ऑनलाइन कॉल कॉन्फ्रेंस विद श्री सुनील कुमार सेक्रेटरी पंचायत राज मिनिस्ट्री श्री विकास आनंद जॉइंट सेक्रेटरी एंड अदर ऑफिशियल्स आफ्टर प्रेजेंटेशन एंड डिस्कशन श्री सुनील कुमार एक्सप्रेस्ड हिज ओपिनियन अबाउट एन he strongly recommended to adopt and implement it please listen him no okay okay so now as i see it as i see it first of all i am not doctor i am just plain sunil kumar okay <laughs> and i happen to be secretary panchayati raj at this point of time sure sure now now as i see it and uh, my colleague here vikas anand who is the joint secretary uh, he has recently joined the ministry and will be in the ministry for a longer tenure okay. so okay. and he will be the one who would be in, in charge of rgsa all the training uh, which is imparted to elected representatives as well as functionaries so that's why uh, one had uh, invited him for this um, presentation to be present here sure. now yeah. if i have to sort of give my comments on this so yes what you have addressed those are real concerns real issues my impression after discussions with various people in sirds and nird pr was that the courses that have been designed as on date the way candidates are selected or people are nominated to attend those training institutions then you have everyone you can have an person who is just primary pass you can have a graduate you can have a post graduate you can have a high school pass all of them part of that same training group and then in trying to achieve that bare minimum or appeal to everyone you either make it too simple or it, it goes beyond uh, the competence so your very first imagery where you had mentioned i think that addresses a very key question and a very important deficiency in our system as it is on date and uh, i think there may be some states they may have found something but on a scale i think by and large this problem still remains and we will need to address that very effectively very consciously if we have to make training really impactful so there i think what you have devised what you have designed i think that's a very significant improvement and that is something which all states all sirds including nirdpr all of us can uh, learn the second thing is use of technology uh, mobile based uh, apps through which uh, people are learning they are assessing all those there's a lot of value in uh, that as on date if i am uh, to personally because there will be whole of a, a lot of other things which uh, government sird and ird pr they will be looking at but personally i feel ki yes this is i am not saying ki you do away with uh, classroom training or you do away with group because in a country like ours everyone needs to coexist it's not one at the cost of another agree okay but this is this will really improve say if someone who has who is coming to a training in an sird or a dprc and they have already done this then the quality of discussion the quality of interaction experience sharing that will be qualitatively different than uh, what we are or they are engaging in at present where they are going there spending time spending money and uh, achieving a very bare uh, sort of basic level of uh, yeah that should when you are having face to face uh, interaction experience sharing group work exposure visits then you should be asking lot more sort of penetrating questions Correct. not Correct. just going there and uh, coming back so i think if this will definitely add value to whatever training is being imparted by sirds the um, sort of uh, faculty there 
and uh, this is something which we should be promoting okay so on that count as far as my personal uh, views are concerned this is the way ahead you are or i'll uh, th- i think you are on the right track and we should be promoting it it is also there in the ncbf uh, report so i don't see any reason why we should not be doing that and i think from the ministry we should be as far as the training portion is concerned where the elected representatives as well as the functionaries they get to see now the second part which was there about which the js asked the question that uh, and where you said ki said there should be complete transparency said every citizen should be able to see as to where their uh, uh, sort of uh, ye is their uh, their grip what is happening to them it has been disposed of at that point of time i think there may be sort of uh, state wise there will be certain uh, sensitivities at this point of time Okay. okay whether it will be there for all times to come that no one can say what is uh, sensitive today may not be sensitive 5 years down the line we are living in a dynamic uh, world and what is possible today was not possible 5 years or 10 years back but in government we have to get over those mental blocks and it is more in the mind than anything else Correct. Correct. If we make it open, if we make it transparent in a gram panchayat, there is nothing which we can say that comes under official secrets act or which is so sensitive matters of state that it will uh, harm this one or that. Right. Ultimately, right. it is uh, the people themselves who have a right to know. And uh, local government is one area where uh, the more transparency you have, the better it is. But then. states have put in place certain systems correct correct maybe government of india too has also put in place certain systems your uh, what you are projecting that that may or may not sort of actually fit in at this point of time so at this point of time i would suggest keep your training uh, portion wherein the elected representative or the panchayat functionary or even as a citizen on those 20 domains those 250 uh, sort of uh, major ye yeah, then 750 micro competencies they get a training they get an idea and we should say and we should uh, project it that this is a basic level of understanding which people can do at their home mm-hmm. using the time at their disposal because i know that in karnataka they wanted to provide the first orientation training to all the elected representatives within 6 months of their election right. and lot of time lot of effort went into and they used satellite based uh, ye yeah, they trained master trainers at every cluster of panchayats there were these facilities were created and all that i'm not uh, saying ki it was not required it was required and ye but whole lot of ye with this it is possible that a candidate even at the time of elections or even before contesting elections he can become aware so then if he is contesting filing nominations he can be a more informed he will have a clear idea ki what his role as a ward member would be what his role as a sarpanch should be right right or uh, a public functionary would be right. right so ideally it is empowering the citizen it is strengthening and deepening democracy at the grassroots level so this training portion and because it is available in the form of an app at the panchayat level which a person can do at his level it uh, is very doable of course as you had mentioned you require a mentor you require someone at the village level who can do it and say 6000 rupees a month in a panchayat is not too much i agree i agree if you uh, if you if any panchayat wants to do it they can hire a person yes we require a mentor this is so useful you help us navigate this whole thing 
and uh, it will work out much cheaper than uh, what we are spending on training as on day so in totality it will work out uh, to be sort of cost effective too but then as i said ki this has to become a part of our ye we don't say ki it is replacing uh, the other it becomes is have in the first month you do this initially we can cannot make it mandatory ki you have to clear this then only you become eligible to take uh, be sworn in as the panchayat member or as the sarpanch right. because he has won the election he will become a sarpanch or a ward member but we initially we can say if you have done this course you will be in a better year you will have a head start correct okay and then all those are matters of detail which will can be worked out state by state in discussion with uh, uh, the actual stakeholders okay. so okay. it is not for me to uh, sit and uh, decide ki uh, they have to clear do this in uh, 10 days time or 15 days or time or 3 months time or 6 months time let them decide what the yeah. but the message that we should be sending is ki it is going to help you in performing your duty in performing your job better and in that this is an aid similarly sird and nird pr we are saying ki don't stop doing what you are you keep on doing right. there's a, even that would be required and in fact here also as you are seeing ki as you go towards the advanced and expert level the complexity increases correct correct and that is something where maybe uh, people uh, in different parts they can also they also become contributors correct, to correct. the work that you are doing why should it be left uh, entirely to sampurna swaraj foundation and your 10 people or 12 people or 20 people whom you can uh, sort of bring it about let correct. others also contribute this correct. so there you are working carving out a role for them their faculty their uh, mentors their uh, sort of people who are uh, engaged in training ki yes you begin to contribute your videos we are not saying ki we are the final word on this for right. the entire country at large right right, right. right. but then basic structure is this right. basic right. use of technology is this so we are the providers it can be tailored as per a state's uh, requirements needs sensitivities you want uh, your uh, videos to be made in a different manner say if you are uh, showing it in nagaland let there be naga women uh, discussing about uh, uh, what are the various uh, women related schemes which are running there right. similarly right. in different parts it will be different but the basic structure will remain the same basic structure ki 20 domains 250 competencies 750 micro competencies and if someone wants to add more you are free to add right. more no one is stopping you correct correct no one is stopping you but as a beginning as a starting point this is lot of work that has uh, been done and i think we should be uh, getting in uh, serious consultation with these get the sirds and nird pr uh, together and uh, maybe a meeting can be held in an ird pr okay and then uh, we say ki yes we want this because sometimes we have to put our foot down we have to make it very clear to both uh, nird pr and sirds ki look what you are doing okay go ahead keep on doing that but begin to use this give this option say out of 7.5 lakh elected representatives in uttar pradesh yeah, yeah. even 10000 or 20000 do this uh, yes. course Correct. basic Correct. course or foundation course or whatever and they attend training it will have a different flavor altogether yeah yeah so i think we should be using this finding out the working we need to work out the modalities the costing the role the role of all stakeholders see what would be the role of sapurna swaraj foundation what would be the role of other technology providers service providers whether it is nic whether it is anyone else how it can be integrated but where we can find 
solutions to any problem but first we must all agree ki yes this is the way forward right now as an ngo they have been uh, working for the last 13 years and doing whatever they can it's just out of passion but then if we support them yes it can really have that multiplier effect and i think it is perfectly doable so give it a thought uh, be in touch with uh, these uh, sampurna swaraj foundation yes. if need be you can go to bangalore have a meeting in uh, mysore where sird or uh, government of karnataka officials and maybe others or they can come over to nird pr whatever it is whatever you feel fit i think we should be uh, flexible on that depending upon what suits or what is most convenient to everyone because if they are experts if people who have been involved if they find it convenient to uh, have a meeting in bangalore have it in uh, bangalore so then we make a starting at least we get to know whatever and even the technology service providers and others they can also be sort of uh, yeah you look this product is available it can be customized and uh, chandrashekhar pran whom you have uh, associated he is a grassroots worker who has worked in uh, uttar pradesh and if right. someone can, something can work in up and uh, madhya pradesh so then it will work other places too and you have uh, factored it in ki all these state uh, panchayati raj acts and rules are different slightly different they need to be tailored and so they will be making customized training uh, ye for modules for every state and that will take time it will not happen uh, immediately but on the basic idea the basic uh, sort of direction in which we are moving we should work out a time table he say in the next 2 years in the next 2 and 1/2 years in the first phase we'll be covering these states depending upon where work has been done say right now if they have done the most of the work in karnataka karnataka can be the first uh, state to be off the blocks so let them begin to use it then similarly if we can do the hindi thing in uh, yeah, at least some portion that basic or foundation course that can be rolled out the other courses will come later so if we are able to bring this and we tell the states look this is uh, what uh, this has been developed under ncbf which is approved by we get nird pr and others to approve it and say if we are looking at uh, sird mysore uh, yashda in um, pune and uh, kila in uh, kerala as uh, sort of uh, institutions which can also work to promote uh, prepare a uh, sort of uh, master trainers and others so i think we can rope them in so get them together and then uh, work out a time table and once you present that so then we officially write to the states ki look this is how it will be rolled out okay so what i would suggest is that maybe in the next um, 30 to 45 days uh, one and half months uh, it will take let's uh, have this preliminary meeting you can send uh, some of your people or uh, if possible whatever it is uh, work that out and then let's work out a course of action ki this is how we intend to go about wherein you will be going into greater details say those details i cannot offhand uh, reel them out but those details will need to be worked out costing will need to be worked out technical issues will need to be worked out ki how it will be integrated how it will be done who will be responsible for what all those things will need to be worked out and if we can roll it out in two or three or four pilot states say one hindi speaking karnataka is already there and any other state where they feel ki they can uh, do it quickly okay so then we will come out so then we are off the ground and then it becomes here and then we have to tell the panchayat functionaries and the ki if you are to get an increment say if you are a panchayat secretary if you are to get an increment 
you have to clear this you have to be proficient in this because we presume that just because they are a government uh, employee they know everything but they don't know uh, everything right that panchayat secretary may also require training for preparing uh, the minutes of uh, gram sabha meetings or uh, yeah. so all those things also get built in and uh, for the account keeping i think ki what is happening is that uh, comptroller and auditor general cag yeah yeah they in consultation with uh, this uh, institute of chartered accountants of india right right they have worked out a sort of basic uh, online course for testing the accounting proficiencies which are required in a gram panchayat and they are they have based it on e gram swaraj okay. so okay. there they will be providing that training any citizen any person who is 10th pass or 12th pass or a graduate he can enroll in that course mm -hmm. three months or three and half months course and then they will get a certificate he yes he is proficient he is fully sort of ye to prepare the accounts mm -hmm. of uh, gram panchayat which is in tune with what is there in e gram swaraj application right right okay so if they are doing it we don't have to do that all over again because what we are providing here is sort of basic here if, hmm. if you are a sarpanch if you are an elected representative you should know what report is being put up to you you should be able to see ki what it means so this is the receipt this is the expenditure these are, this is the surplus or this is the negative or whatever it is i don't know so i i am just presuming but for accountancy if that thing is there we'll build it in but for others we can say he look for your panchayat secretary he should also be clearing this make it uh, mandatory request the state governments to make it important that if they want their next increment they should clear this uh, if they want a promotion they should be clearing uh, this and right now they have done for gram panchayat similarly for block panchayat and district panchayat too they can come up with, uh, a sort of similar training uh, modules right because for block panchayat and district panchayat members and their functionaries also this would be required i agree i agree with you yes we had created that kind of vertical we had created that kind of vertical architecture just yeah just needs the right kind of push from the right kind of people that is the so i think at this point of time if you all agree to this so then we can get, go ahead on this line or you have any suggestion then you could give to us so that then based on that we can formulate our response no uh, sunil no, uh, kumar ji i think what you spoke, what you spoke what was, was what was in my mind for the last few years i think it is very encouraging that you think exactly the way we have envisaged or envisioned what we want to do so so my request would be whenever uh, mr vikas anand is free either i think i think we need to spend half a day either in bangalore or in delhi so that we can actually come up with a uh, phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 approach and and if necessary we need to bring here all yeah 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 whichever, yeah, whichever is, is easy uh, is uh, so, that so that we move it forward, it forward. Otherwise, otherwise i just don't, I just want, don't want, want it to die a slow, slow death that's the uh, uh, way i look at it so no i think what the point which you are making is uh, very valid um, we need to act fast we cannot just let it be in limbo for next 5 years right. because nothing right. is static everything uh, yeah people who are uh, interested today they just get disheartened and then they it goes later the same thing if the world bank comes and says ki look we have this product and then we'll be very happy to say ki okay world bank is giving us this and that right. and right. here uh, have our own uh, product and we just let it die a uh, slow death so i don't right. think uh, that would be right so vikas anand he already has your uh, number your uh, email address everything so he will get in touch with you he will be speaking to you 
and he will be working out the modalities maybe in delhi maybe in bangalore where whatever is possible at the earliest but i would definitely like that before 15th september we should have a agreed template ki this is how we go ahead and uh, once we have that then we should be officially i should be a letter should go to all states under my signatures ki look this is what has been agreed upon and under their approved uh, sort of uh, uh, annual action plan for under rgsa let them make a provision for this okay ठीक है आई थिंक थैंक यू ऑल ऑल ऑफ यू फॉर अ गुड प्रेजेंटेशन इट हैज बीन अ लर्निंग एक्सपीरियंस फॉर ऑल ऑफ अस एंड लेट्स सी विल ट्राई आवर बेस्ट टू कैरी इट फॉरवर्ड थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर योर थैंक यू फॉर योर पेशेंट लिसनिंग थैंक यू विकास आनंद थैंक यू सर थैंक यू